You're watching The End Zone, sponsored by Lucky Star Casino. Welcome to another edition of The End Zone. I am Colby Daniels, along with my co-host, TJ Eckert. And joining us this week from 107.7 The Franchise, Matt Burton. As guys, it is finally November. It's the best month of the college football season. Conference races are in full swing. We have the college football playoff bracket to discuss. And uh, angry fan bases here in the state of Oklahoma, especially with bull hopes looming. I was going to say, is it the best month of the season for, for us? For Oklahoma fans? I um, fans? I, I just, yeah, nationally. Traditionally, yeah, November nationally. is nationally, yeah, sure. a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> nationally, yeah. This is, uh, this is normally a really fun time of year, but right now there's so many things to talk about. Uh, I know Matt will jump on the Sooners first, and this needs to be an important month of November for them. As It, it's, it used to be championship November. I don't think we call it that uh, anymore. Yeah. But yeah. uh, it needs to, it, it's an important month for Brent Venables' group. It's turned into let's make a bowl game uh, November. Okay. I think that's I like what, that. it's, what it's turned into. But, yeah, I mean, with the – the injuries at wide receiver with the offensive line where they are, it's uh, it's tough to watch right now. It really is. And, you know, the SEC availability report came out last night. Felt like more names get added to that every single week. So uh, <laughs> it's just going to, it's like every other week, tune in and just see who goes out there and play. Right. There, there was small progress against Ole Miss offensively, right? Yep. Clearly they were going to have success against Maine, which they did. I think a lot of people ask, like, how much of the success against Maine can you tangibly take and feel like you can look for that against Missouri? Well, I was saying last week, too, uh, uh, the thing that you can take away from Maine with some of the young guys like Ahito Zaida, like a Logan Howland, those guys are young, too. Like, everyone wants Eddie Pierre and Louis, Eugene Brooks is to play and all that stuff, but Zaida and Howland are very young, too. And for me, last week, I equated it to basketball, right? Just see a few go through. Get that muscle memory down and see it actually work in action and see if you can translate that to okay, SEC defensive linemen, right, to, to blocking those guys. So uh, I think that's important, just seeing, yeah. just executing. Yeah, definitely. Missouri feels like, to me anyway, that their best chance for a win these last three in these. Yeah. Alabama looks vulnerable. You know, LSU on the road, that's going to be tough. But it feels like if you're going to win one and you're going to get the bowl eligibility, it's got to be this one. It, it has to be. Uh, I, like, I like where your head's at with Alabama looking vulnerable. LSU uh, there at night in Death Valley. It, it looks like a, a daunting task, but... Right now, you got to handle, hopefully, you know, a, a Brady Cook-less Missouri team. Hopefully, Drew yeah. Pine, last time out, three interceptions. I think only threw for, like, 50-something yards against Alabama. So, uh, you got to take care of business in Columbia. And it's going to be a big game for the fan base, too, because they've spent yeah. uh, all offseason and up till now uh, just bickering with Missouri fans online. It's been great. How do you feel about what the offense has been able to do since mm. the big change? Uh, I've liked what I've seen, just, just some flashes of things, right? I, I think you've seen uh, some growth here and there. Um, but, again, I, I can't take too much away from Maine. Uh, I've liked what I've seen from Javante Barnes. He's been such mm -hmm. a surprise from last year, whatever that was, whether yeah. it was injury, whether it was – I don't know what it was, but he just didn't capitalize off his true freshman year. And then just seeing the step that he's taken, he's been probably their best player on offense, despite you know what we talked about with the offensive line, the injuries, and just being young, uh, he's still produced at a pretty high level. So I I'm a big fan of Javante Barnes. Keep an eye on Jackson Arnold. I know it's people have been frustrated with him. He's been benched already this season, mm -hmm. but he's still technically a, a sophomore. I mean, right. Really, uh, really only started basically a full year now. I mean, he's only played in what seven, eight, nine games. Right. If you do the math on it, so it's still early for him. He's getting better every week, it appears. And again, Maine yeah. is notwithstanding. He looked better at Ole Miss. Right. Body language has Body improved, right? Confidence, good. yeah. Leadership-wise looks better. Once you're told it's your team and you don't have to yes. worry about anything else, That's sometimes right. that helps, too. And, like, we, if, we, if we go back, I still feel like it was the right thing to do to pull him in that Tennessee game. Yeah, because you're still undefeated, right? Your defense is yeah. playing great. They're getting you turnovers. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's, it's game day, right? All that stuff. I think that was the right decision. But uh, as we've moved on, you know, Brent Middles talked about the body of work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Michael Hawkins in that South Carolina game, it just it felt like a fever dream what was happening. It didn't it, feel like it, it was yeah. real, uh, the start to that game. And uh, I kind of liked what Jackson Arnold said when talking to the media, too, after, you know, some of these recent performances. It's just like, Okay, I feel like, it, what is there to lose, yeah. right? They, they've already lost four games, right? right. Yeah, it's just, it's, what is there to lose? Go out there, play with some confidence, and mm -hmm. play, like, play like you have nothing to lose. Yeah. Speaking of nothing to lose, I, I kind of feel like that's maybe the approach Mike Gundy had <laughs> this week Perhaps. in the media. Uh, he feels yeah. like they've lost six straight, nothing to lose, let it all hang out there. 
His comments have stirred up a hornet's nest in Stillwater. Let's, uh, let's listen to the head ball coach at Oklahoma State. Kind of the synopsis of, of all of this is that um, this place has had tremendous success for 18 and a half years or 19. I can't do the math real good, but and so that one makes me laugh. Too. Unfortunately, in life, most people are weak, and as soon as things start to not go as good as what they thought, they they fall apart and they panic, and then they want to point the finger and blame other people. That you see it happen in everyday life. People do it all the time. Um, that's why I refuse to watch the TV and watch the news because I get tired of people complaining and bitching about this and that versus just doing something about it and trying to figure out a way to make it better. Well, that's what happens in college athletics. And as Jenny said, she's exactly right. It's just on the bigger stage where people can voice their opinion. And in most cases, the people that are negative and voicing their opinion are the same ones that can't pay their own bills. They're not taking care of themselves. They're not taking care of their own family. They're not taking care of their uh, their their own job, but they have an obligation to speak out and, and complain about others because it makes them feel better. But then in the end, when they go to bed at night, they're the same failure that they were before they said anything negative about anybody else. Ouch. Ouch. That, that was that was Ooh. Monday. So what a start to your week. <laughs> and being called a failure, you can't take care of your own family. Like, he, he, has, uh, he has since issued an apology via Twitter on election night, right? Maybe Great hoping, to, hoping to slide Great that in there. But uh, there I, I don't think anybody is taking that as a real apology, or at least it, my perspective is the Oklahoma State fan base has not really accepted that very well. What do you think? <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm scared to talk about it because that might mean I'm poor. So I don't know. Uh, but no, I think uh, great timing, like we talked about on the apology tweet. Uh, fantastic timing. News that dump, is right? no notes, no notes on the timing was, uh, of that. It was perfect, flawless. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, you know we were talking about you know some of the the Twitter replies to you know tweet like, hey, excited to go to Fort Worth, and the fan base has responded uh, accordingly <laughs> I, on, on that. I can't afford it. I have to work another job. <laughs> yeah. I have to I have to get it on a bootleg stream. Right. I can't afford. My cable. rent is three weeks rent, past due. Right. I can't make the trip to Fort Worth. Yeah, it's just like I mean, come on, man. I know. His comments were not directed at OSU fans. Yeah. I think we all kind of know that. But when it came out and he said the... What, at the beginning of the yes. quote, he says, we've had so much success for and 18 he, years. Mm -hmm. That's what I think derails yes. the context yes. of that quote. And, right. and then he says, and you're seeing it every day in college athletics. Right. Like, if you leave that right. line out, then it's just like you're talking about everyday people. But it's tough. That's not two sentences on uh, Twitter for the apology. That was yes. that was really heartfelt. I felt. It's well, really I guess the good news is OSU fans are not talking about the defense or the quarterback play. That's They're right. talking about the gun. <laughs> He's offense, a great distractor. So. It's, yes. a, it's a distraction a from you know the TCU game this weekend. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got to take a timeout. We're going to talk college football playoff bracket on the other side of this break. Matt Burton joins TJ Eckerd and I here on this week's edition of the End Zone. All right, guys, the very first college football playoff rankings in this new 12-team format have been released, and our Sweet. projections of the bracket based on this week's rankings uh, have, have generated a lot of hot takes. I'm just curious in general to get your take on what watching this thing play, play out would look like, because I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see big matchups in college football, big meaningful yeah. matchups yeah. in college football. What do you got? I think if you're number five, Ohio State, it – Early on, it looks like five might be the place to be because you might get the group of five champion and then the worst of the power four champions, and you're in the semifinal. Yeah, just like that. That's something that's been talked about. Is like, is it almost a disadvantage to be the number one team in the country because right. you're having to play two pretty good at large against one of two pretty good at large right. teams, if that's the case. Uh, if you're the number five seed, you get a home game. Mm -hmm. It's at home. You're playing against the worst team to make the playoff. Probably the, the non Power five champion, Correct. right? Yeah. And then most, you're playing the worst times. conference champion, which I know BYU is, is in the Big 12, so we talk about them. But, I mean, looking at the other ones, that's, that's probably the easiest road if you were to have a take there. How about the difference in the path for number five and number six? They're only yeah. separated by one ranking sure. spot. Yeah. But yeah. number five has Boise State and BYU versus Alabama yes. and Miami. Yeah. Are I you mean, kidding me? Yeah, Texas, no, no favors given there for sure. Uh, you talked about this too. Uh, in the first ranking, the SEC and the Big Ten are the only two with multiple 
bids, right? Each that's have right. four. Is that what we just this Yeah, that's right. That's interesting. My question is what happens when Notre Dame, if they lose, does the Big Ten get another spot? Does the SEC get another spot? Or do the ACC and Big 12 become two bid leagues? And then we talked about it too before we started this. 13 was A&M and SMU. SMU is yep. 13 mm -hmm. and A&M is 14, we think. Mm -hmm. So those are the two teams that are the first two on the outside looking in. Normally it's the talk of who's five. Well, now it's who's 13. And right. there's always going to be a discussion about that, no matter how many teams you put in the bracket. And now, only, oh, sorry. there are a lot of teams in this bracket right now that probably could lose again, and yeah, they're yeah. still fine. Now, Indiana might be one. You know, they, they probably yeah. disappear. Uh, sure. But the SEC still has the opportunity to get a couple more teams yes. in beyond what is currently on the bracket. Yeah, they absolutely do. And also, it's the highest ranked conference champion. So it's not power four conference That's champion. Right. So That's right. if BYU loses... Let's say a couple more times, but they win the Big 12, but Boise State wins out. You could see Boise in the four spot that's right. here. That's, so that's an interesting. It's very interesting to see. And, again, we knew that the SEC and Big Ten would be well represented. I'm curious to see if any other conferences are able to get more uh, recognition, more spots. I don't, I'm not imagining that's going to be the case, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. I know the process of arguing who's in, who's out can be maddening, but – Sign me up for meaningful college football. Oh, yeah. This is going to be so much fun to actually watch it play Meaningful out. games, home games that are playoff games. That's too. right. I yeah. think that's cool. Uh, also, I want to point out, I'm just really quick, step out of the way. Just, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, see sorry. OU, OSU, or Tulsa on this. I didn't know uh, if they were covering it up. You weren't. No, uh, none no. of those teams. Maybe runs. a late push. You know, We still have we'll a few weeks we before for the uh, committee to make up their minds. UCO, so. uh, roll shows. <laughs> Roll shows, baby. Yeah, two, two shows here. Hooves up. Yeah, hooves up. Uh, two, they're on the D2 regional rankings. They are. They are. So there's a good chance that we do have some representation in the postseason. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's take another D2. time out, and we're putting Matt Burton in the hot seat. It's moving the chains next on the end zone. The votes are in. And moving the chain is officially America's favorite segment here oh, on the NSA. Oh, good job, America. Matt Burton joins us this week. Matt, simple process. We're going to throw mm -hmm. questions at you. You answer the questions. We judge those answers okay. and either give you positive yardage or negative yardage. Okay. You're going to start with first and ten, and the goal is to move, move the, the chains. Team. Got it. Good luck. So, uh, first question out of the gate. Rank these teams in terms of most disappointing season to least okay. disappointing season. I'm going to give you Michigan, okay. OU, OSU, Florida State and USC. Oh, okay. There's All right. a lot of disappointment Ooh. under that okay. umbrella. Um, okay. I, I might go one Oklahoma State because I thought that they could win the Big 12. Okay. I yeah, mean, they, they, had, yeah. they had the entire offense returning, had a lot of key pieces returning on defense. Yep. So I think Oklahoma State is up there. Um, Florida State was preseason top 10. So, and right. they are one and eight now. Yep. So I'll go Not them great. second. Yeah. Um, I think USC might be third as well, especially when you count in. But they beat LSU in the first game. Yeah. They, they were top 25 game. to start yes. the season yeah. and had the LSU, beat LSU win. And then right. it's gone downhill from there. Uh, OU, I would say, is right there. I didn't have much expectation for Michigan. That's fair. You okay. lose 18 guys to the NFL. There's yeah. going to be some. They weren't preseason top 10, though. That's very yeah. true. That's but very maybe true. that's more of an indictment right. on the AP. And right. winning the national yeah. championship. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you a five yard gain on that. That's a good, oh, that's okay. good. Thank you. One, wow. because it was the right answer, because that was what I was thinking. Okay. Two, because you remembered all the teams. I had a hard time thinking in my head what teams Okay. That was good. It's a good shot. We're going to go second and five now. Uh, Brent Venables talked a couple weeks ago about all five of the Sooners injured wide receivers mm -hmm. expressing interest in coming back. So it's Burks, Farouk, Andrew Anthony, right. Nick Andrew, all the How many of those five do you think actually come back? Um, wow, that's a really good question. Thank I would you. say four or five. Five or no, three. Excuse me. Three oh, or four. Okay. Three or four. Let's go. Final answer, three. Uh, do, you, do you have a guess on which two don't come back? Uh, I would say Deion Burks does not come back. Okay. And go ahead and give me Andrew Anthony. Does it come back? This okay. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna say. I agree with your answer. I think th three is a good number. I think it was a, it was poorly delivered. It was. was very, it was. That's it. You know, <laughs> that's the inside very, zone straight up the middle of minus very, one I'm, I'm, gain. I get that. I get that's that. That's gonna that's be a, that's gonna be a three yard loss. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. You can, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So three yard loss. So we'll say third yeah. and eight. Third and eight. So here's what I'm for third and eight. We just did the playoff segment, right? Yeah. What's the right amount of teams for a college football playoff? Is 12 good? Do we need more? Do we need less? Ooh, what do you think? I think this is pretty good. I you mean, like just 12? talking about that bracket right there, that, that got me fired up, man. Okay. And, uh, yes, I, I think yeah, 12 is perfect. And I can't wait to see how it plays out. Okay. Anything more than four. I, I'm with you. I, I, I love 
that that format, and it still keeps More I think better. a lot of of uh, excitement with the regular oh, yeah. season and, and who's going to get those spots. So okay. uh, I'm going to give you seven yards. That's okay. good. That's fourth nice. We're going right. to attempt to move the chains on yeah. fourth okay. and one. Okay. And one. Yeah. So fourth down. Uh, let's you let's hope that you either. are. Okay. Yeah, you're not punting. Well, well, well. <laughs> Is it too early for Christmas decorations? Oh, I know it's early oh, November. Geez. But I'm seeing Christmas yeah, decorations out and about, early. so what do you think? I am very much a let's get through Thanksgiving guy. Let's get okay. through Thanksgiving and then you can go there. Now, I am fine with Christmas music, oh. but setting up the Christmas decorations, we gotta set up the Thanksgiving. You're fine with for... Christmas music Being right now? Played. Sure, yeah, that's fine. That's... Do whatever you want. I'm not gonna listen to it, but if you want to, that's your prerogative. But as far as decorating, we gotta get through Thanksgiving first. We got another major holiday coming TJ, up. TJ, TJ is stressing uh, over here. Listen, about how we've easy never that. not given a first down before, <laughs> Matt, and I'm genuinely wondering if this is gonna be the first time. Because I won't put up Christmas decorations? No, it's not the decorations, it was, it's, it's the music. It's that you gave the green light to okay, music you know over why? decorations. You know what? Sister Station Magic is playing Christmas music now. Oh, so I'm okay. just being a company man, here, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm doing, TJ. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, turn over on downs? That's fine. Hey, I'll is, be the first hey, this one. Is, this one's on you. This one's I'll on you. I'll be the first one. That's okay. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but that's, yeah. It, maybe, you know what? You called a timeout. We'll have to yeah. think about it during the break, I guess. <laughs> yeah. we'll, th we'll figure it out later, I guess, man. I don't know. It was looking good, and then here we are. First, first I, don't, I don't know where to go from here. All right, we're going to have to go to replay, and uh, okay. we'll let you know on the other side of the break whether oh. it's a first down or, or we've, uh, we've had our first stop. Game picks next I'm on believe. the end zone. After review, what are we doing? Are we are we going? Yeah, it was two, turnover it was on downs. One of those, it was like uh, the call on the field stands. Okay, like, okay. there wasn't enough That's evidence good. to yeah. show. So you quarterback yeah. sneaked in. We couldn't really see the spot on the field. They gave you the first mm -hmm. down. It's just I'm a, I'm a Christmas fan, so I'm kind of <laughs> leaning in that direction. But I, look, turnover on downs. It was it was tough. It was there tough we go. Uh, we'll give it to you. You know That's what? Fine. It was fun. It's fine. It was good. Nonetheless, it was good. It was fun. And and you've made history. So That's good. Yes, you know, I'll take that. Yeah, I will yeah, take that. You're a pioneer. Pioneer. <laughs> you're on, you're on the All right, it's time for game picks. Let's take a look at uh, at last week's record. TJ, you have won like three weeks in a row, but uh, it dropped off. Didn't win last, last week. week. Yeah, last week was tough. Uh, what have we learned? Don't pick OSU. But uh, we'll see what happens. That's right. <laughs> Overall standings, uh, you were really cutting into my lead, but uh, got still a couple time. back. Still time. Still time. Still, still a lot of yeah. a lot of football lot of to football be played. Play. So yeah. let's see what we got here. There we go. All right, game number one this week. We have the Big 12 leader in a rivalry game against the team that everybody thought would win the Big 12. So I think that this game means more to BYU at this point in the season than it does to Utah. So I'll take the Cougs on the road. I am also taking the Cougs on the road. They still got a lot to play for. Seeing that number four by yep. their name, I think they're bringing it. I mean, Utah's got to show up one time. <laughs> I said this about OSU last week, and I was wrong, but right. they have a good defense. I think they can at least stay within four, if not pull off the upset in a rivalry game it can happen. on their home field. And I think BYU is good, but it can I don't happen. think they're just so good that they, they run away. So give me Utah on the points. Yep. All right, game number two in the SEC, Georgia at Ole Miss. This will be a fun one. Ole Miss really hasn't shown me anything against good teams, and I think Georgia's still on the climb back, so I'll take the dogs again on the road. I'm also taking the dogs. Two and a half is uh, just too low points. Uh, they're, they, they're definitely winning by more than a field goal. Georgia is the better team, and if I'm only giving up two and a half, give me Georgia. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the game of the weekend and what is probably an elimination game in terms of the college football playoff, Alabama at LSU. I think the band, LSU band, will be playing neck a lot. <laughs> it's a night game, so I'm sure the fans will be fired up for that. And they're a home dog, so I'll take the Tigers. Uh, give me Bama on the road. I think they bounce back in a, in, in a big way, man. Keep this rolling. Yeah. I kind of feel like both of these teams are having like an identity crisis. I just feel like LSU's lows maybe are a little bit lower than, than Alabama. And Alabama's ceiling is maybe a little bit higher, so give me the Crimson Tide okay. on the road. All right, Oklahoma State, I keep saying it's got to happen some week, right? <laughs> TJ, is this the week that they, they turn it around, that they finally win a conference game? This is the week they cover. Uh, <laughs> ten and a half is a lot on the road. TCU's won by two games against Power 5 opponents by over ten and a half. They won by 11. So I'll take the Pokes to, to cover, maybe not win, but cover. Guys, you are uh, you're better than me. I'm going TCU minus 10 and a half. I, I, the TCU can put up some points, but and with OSU's defense right now, I'm sorry, 10 and a half is too low for me. Okay. I, I feel like I can say OSU has the worst defense in college football. Yeah. Statistically right? and just uh, yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, TCU can score points, but 
feel like oh, their, their defense isn't that great either. So right. 30, 10 and a half points. Yeah. Give me, give 34, me the points. 34, 24, you win. That's, That's right. Yeah. That's exactly. a lot of points. Yeah. So I think TCU wins, but I'll take the points. Yeah. All right, Oklahoma started as an underdog this week, but they're now the favorite on the road against Missouri. I think OU's got a little motivation with this one. Caden Green news, all that stuff in the offseason. You can say it means nothing. I think it means something. So I'll take the Sooners on the road. Why not? Uh, this may be a little bit like a happiness hedge for the people out there, but I'm going uh, Missouri plus two and a half. I just, sure. uh, against SEC competition, just have not seen it. You have to show me something, OU. Uh, give me the Sooners. I think they're going to get it done. And uh, the fact that Missouri isn't who they were a year ago yep. and their quarterback situation, yep. I think, leaves a lot to be desired. So give me OU. Matt, we appreciate the time. Appreciate and uh, we'll be Good back job, on Matt. the end zone next week. Everybody have a great weekend.